In my last video, I showed how to use UMDH. Let's go further by analyzing a heap using WinDebug. Okay, so in my previous video, I showed how to use UMDH to capture memory allocations from a native heap into a text file and then subsequently to use UMDH to analyze the difference and know where there is a memory leak. There is actually a more direct way of figuring out a memory leak by looking at the heap in WinDebug. It's not necessarily easier to do this, but it is a technique that you can use if you have a memory dump or you have a live application and you're able to view the heap over a certain period of time. But before we get into that, a quick primer on what exactly is the stack and the heap. When a variable is declared in a function, it goes onto the stack. The stack is pre-allocated when the thread started. So when a thread starts, it gets a certain amount of memory and that is the stack. The heap is allocated by certain functions when they are called. And the heap is a dynamic space that grows. Windows tracks the heap using a handle that can be analyzed by WinDebug. And this is what we will use to analyze and see if we have a memory leak. This technique, even though it's possible, is extremely tedious. I highly recommend using a dedicated tool to find memory leaks. However, if you only have WinDebug or only have an application that has been running for a long time and the only thing you have is the ability to capture a memory dump, go ahead, use WinDebug, it's better than nothing. Okay, so let's get started. Let me switch to my remote machine. So what I have here is just a regular Windows computer. I'm going to run an application and then I'm going to capture two memory dumps using WinDebug and we are going to use the memory dumps to analyze and find a memory leak. So the application that I have is an application that I wrote specifically to generate memory leaks. The program does nothing. It just allocates memory and throws it away. I'll put the source code for this program on GitHub and put a link in the description below. You can check it out. Um, nothing special about this program. All it does is generate a memory leak. Okay, so the first thing we need to do before we run our application is we need to enable user mode stack tracing. Now user mode stack tracing is a feature of Windows in which if there is memory allocation, dynamic memory allocation, Windows will actually track the stack. If you do not run this command, you can find memory leaks, but it's very difficult to trace it to which part of the code the leak came from. So what you need to do on the command prompt is you just need to run the command gflags slash i, the name of the executable plus ust. What this does is that it will actually edit the Windows registry and it will put a command to say that this program needs user mode stack tracing. You'll get the UAC control that will appear here. Just press yes. Um, it is a registry modification. That's why UAC appears. Let me start by first launching WinDebug. What I want to do is I want to actually capture a memory dump before the leaks and then capture a memory dump after the leaks. And using the delta of the two, I'll be able to find the memory leak. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to launch the program in WinDebug. I'm just going to go to WinDebug. I'm going to go to file. I'm going to go to open executable. I'm going to put the, I'm going to choose my executable memleak1, my specially written program. Press open. And what will happen is it will reach here to the initial breakpoint. I'm just going to press F5. There we are. And the program is running. So this is the program over here. Uh, all it does is if I press enter, it will leak memory. That's all it does. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually take a baseline memory dump and this baseline memory dump is what I will use to determine if there is a memory leak. So let me just capture that memory dump in Winnipeg. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, a dump here. So it is dump slash MA. MA means um, mini dump. A is all, so mini dump all. Always do that if you're capturing a mini dump from inside WinDebug because you want to get all the information in that dump. You don't want the dump to be a simplified dump. It will use up more memory space. It will use up more hardy space. Don't care about it. Always put slash MA. So I'm going to call this base.dmp. So this memory dump 
is before any leak. So now I'm going to resume from there and I'm going to go to my program and I'm going to create some memory leaks and then take another memory dump. Okay, program is ready. I'm going to press enter a few times. So every time a line comes out leaking memory, press enter to leak or queue to quit, it's leaking some memory and I'll be able to track that. So I'm going to go back to WinDebug. I'm going to actually take another memory dump over here. But this time I'm going to call it leak1.dmp. This second memory dump is what I'm going to use to analyze if there is a memory leak and show you how to track it in the heap. To make it simpler, what I'm going to do is I'm going to close WinDebug. That kills the program and I'm going to open a new instance of WinDebug and I'm going to open both the memory dumps. So what I do is I just start WinDebug again and I'm just going to go file. I'm going to go open crash dump. I don't know why they call it crash dumps. It, I took the memory dump. It shouldn't be called crash. But anyway, they call it crash dumps. So just go to the location and I'm going to open base.dmp. So that dump will open here and I can start analyzing. Now that I have the memory dump open, I'm going to show you a trick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the command open dump and I'm going to open the second memory dump within the first. Now WinDebug has this feature where you can actually attach the debugger to multiple processors. They call it systems. In my case, I'm going to open both memory dumps and it's going to consider it as two systems. Now, if I use the dot open dump command, what I need to do after that is I need to press F5 to execute the dump. Now that I've done that, both memory dumps are open in one instance of WinDebug. This will aid me in comparing memory between the two memory dumps. WinDebug has a few interesting commands when you have a few systems loaded in a single instance. Now, if you look at the prompt, you notice that the prompt looks slightly different. That's because it, this part over here on the left side over here is the system. Now I can actually manipulate this. What I can do is if I type two pipe symbols in a row, it will show me the number of systems that have been loaded into this instance of WinDebug. I can also use it to switch between systems. So I'm going to switch to system zero, which is my base dump over here. If I want to switch to system one, I can do it by use, just putting in the number. And if I don't know which system I'm at, I can put a dot. Um, you can also just view systems and you'll get this little dot at the side showing you which system is currently being shown. So I'm going to switch to the first system, which is the base dump. And I'm going to take a look at the heap and then I'm going to look at the leak. And I'm, go taking, I'm going to take a look at the heap and we're going to compare that in order to dive in to find the memory leak. Okay, I've cleared the screen. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run heap minus s. What heap minus s does is it shows a summary of the heaps in the memory dump. So if I take a look at this heap, I see that the handle is over here. That's the leftmost part. I see the flags for the heap and I see the sizes over here. Each one of these columns is a different type of memory allocation. I will make a detailed video about what is reserved memory, committed memory and virtual memory. Um, we can skip that for now, but what we want to look for is we want to look for the committed size. The committed is the amount of memory that has actually been requested by the program and is going to be used by the program. So if the committed size is increasing, it means that the memory is increasing. Because we know that this program is generating a leak, we can look at the committed size and we can try to look at the bottom of the heap and try to deduce if there is a memory leak. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the heap of the second memory dump. So same thing, I'm going to switch to the second memory dump and I'm going to run heap minus s. Now, if I take a look at the second memory dump, I get the same heap over here. So this is the same heap, uh, same flags. But if I look at the committed size, it was 88 and now it is 112. That means this heap is growing. Now the re reserve size and the virtual size, they may also grow at, at a certain point, but we're going to skip that for now. We're just going to focus on the committed size. Let's look deeper into that heap. So what we want to do is we want to just take the handle over here. We want to run heap minus h 
with that handle. What will happen is that WinDebug will actually look inside the heap and it will decode each object that has been allocated. Now, an object in this context does not necessarily, necessarily mean a C++ object. This can be a string, it can be an array, it can even be a single number. It doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's a single allocation, it's considered an object. So if I take a look at this heap, I get a lot of, of allocations, but if I look at the bottom, I get a whole bunch of allocations that kind of have the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deduce that this potentially could be the leak. I can check that out by going back to the first memory dump and running the same command again. And I notice that it stops after this allocation over here, this address over here. But in the second memory dump, it doesn't, it continues here. So I'm going to guess that this is the location of a memory leak. Now, this is a bit unscientific. We don't actually know whether that is an actual memory leak, but we just have a good estimate whether it is. In order to really figure out whether this is a memory leak, we need to take a lot of memory dumps and we need to take a memory dump after the point we assume the memory has been cleaned up. That way we can delta and we can see the difference. I'm going to skip doing all that right now because that's really tedious and that's more a job for UMDH. So I'm going to just focus on assuming that the bottom of the heap is actually leaked memory. It won't be the case all the time, but if you have really large allocations, you'd be probably easy to spot. Generally, a tool like UMDH does a better job because it can delta the memory and show you exactly what is leaking. Now, if I want to look closer at the object over here, I can just take one of these addresses and I can run heap minus p minus a and put the address. What this does is that it looks at the heap, it looks at the allocation and it actually walks backwards and finds the stack. Remember at the beginning of this video we ran gflex plus usd? This is why you need to run gflex plus usd. If you run that command, every allocation will contain a user mode stack. This stack is what allocated the memory. Now, in my program, I intentionally wrote that all memory leaks will come from a function called leak. So if I look at the stack over here, I have the main of my program and I have a function called leak. So I can deduce that this function leak is actually allocating the memory because I can see here leak calls malloc and the memory was allocated. Nothing in here indicates this is a memory leak, but this is a very strong clue that this allocation has not been cleaned up. If you can make that link that the dump contains memory that should have been cleaned up but hasn't been cleaned up, you can deduce that that is the leak. Now, if you have a memory leak and you have an allocation that keeps appearing, you can also just ask WinDebug to search through the heap and find all allocations that have the same size. So what I can do is I can run heap flt FLT means uh, filter and I can just, oh, you got to put a, you got to put a minus, minus FLT and you can give it a filter. One of the filters is size. So if I put FLT as 88, it's going to look at the heap and find all objects with that size. There we are. Now, if I see all these objects with the size, I could probably deduce that some of them are memory leaks. If I take a look at heap minus P minus A and give it the address. And I look, oh, it's the same place. Mem leak one, leak. So I can probably deduce that this function is looping and then it is generating a lot of leaks. Now, at this point, you can probably see how tedious it is to find a memory leak using WinDebug alone. It's not impossible. And if you have no other better tool, use WinDebug. But a better tool would make this job a lot easier. Generally, I would only use WinDebug to find memory leaks if something extraordinary occurred, like you have gigabytes of memory being leaked out. Well, your chance of finding a leak if you have gigabytes being leaked out is pretty high if you use WinDebug because when you look at the heap, you can probably see the largest heap growing and you can probably deduce that something in there is growing. But if you want to find memory leaks um, in 
most applications using a dedicated tool like UMDH or even a better tool that you can buy commercially is going to be much easier than using WinDebug. However, just knowing that WinDebug can do it is an awesome technique because you can use it in a pinch if you don't have any better tool. Anyway, just give it a try. You never know, it might become useful for you in the future. Have you ever used this technique? If you have, let me know in the, this, in the comments below if you've ever used this technique before. I actually have. I've come across programs that have gigabytes of memory which it should not have. And I've taken a memory dump and looked at the heap and deduced that it was actually allocations which have gone like, like it's not being deleted and it's way too large. So I have used this technique before, even though it's very tedious, but in selective niche usage, it is a lifesaver. So if you have used this before, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, video is long enough. Gentle reminder, subscribe, hit that bell icon and give me a like if you like the content. As always, it's been a pleasure bringing you this information. I am High Voice, signing out.